In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of all creation, we give thanks for the beautiful world that you have made, and for all the teeming life on this planet, for the trees that give us fruit and shade, for the vegetation that feeds us and delights our senses. And especially today, we give thanks for the creatures who provide us friendship, protection, and joy in our lives. 
Teach us to be responsible caregivers of that which you have entrusted to us to steward and care for, that we may all thrive and live in harmony until that day when all of creation will be restored. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God creates the animals and birds from the same ground that the first human is created. Animals and humans are kin and partners. Like children, the first human names the animals as part of a living family in Eden. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 2, beginning at the 18th verse. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will take him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and the wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. In this vision of the future, it is not only the angels that praise Christ on the throne, but also the living creatures of earth and sky. They are an integral part of our hope and our future. The second reading comes from Revelation chapter 5, beginning at the 11th verse. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Francis of Assisi was born to a man of business, a cloth merchant. He enjoyed a very rich, easy life growing up because of his father's wealth. Everyone loved Francis. He was constantly happy, charming, and a born leader. As he grew up, Francis became the leader of a crowd of young people who spent their nights in wild parties. It was said that he attracted to himself a whole retinue of young people, addicted to evil and accustomed to vice. Francis himself said, I lived in sin during that time. Francis was good at business. He wanted to be a noble, a knight, and battle was the best place to win the glory and prestige he longed for. He got his first chance when Assisi declared war on a longtime enemy. Most of the troops were butchered in the fight. Only those wealthy enough to expect to be ransomed were taken prisoner. And at last, Francis was among the nobility, like he always wanted to be. But he was chained in a harsh, dark dungeon. Finally, after a year, he was ransomed. Strangely, the experience didn't seem to change him, and he gave himself to partying with as much joy and abandon as he had before the battle. Finally, a call for knights for the Fourth Crusade gave him a chance for his dream. With a suit of armor decorated with gold and his war horse, Francis set off for the Holy Land not any farther than one day's ride from Assisi, and he had a dream in which God told him he had it all wrong and told him to return home. He was humiliated, laughed at, called a coward by the village, and raged at by his father for the money wasted on armor. Francis started to spend more time in prayer, and he went off to a cave and wept for his sins. He continued his life of business, but became closer to God over time. Eventually, Francis heard Christ on, the crucifix, cruci on a crucifix speak to him. He said, Francis, repair my church. So Francis took fabric from his father's shop and sold it to get money to repair a church building. His father saw this as an act of theft and he dragged Francis before the bishop and demanded that Francis return the money and renounce all rights as his heir. Francis repaid the debt and gave all that he had to his father. And wearing nothing but cast off rags, he went off into the freezing woods, singing. And when robbers beat him later and took his clothes, he climbed out of the ditch and went off singing again. And from then on, Francis had nothing. And so Francis went back to what he considered God's call. And he begged for stones, and he rebuilt the San Dam Dam Damiano church with his own hands. He had not realized that it was the church, the people, 
not the church, the building, that God wanted repaired. So soon Francis started to preach. He was never a priest, though he was later ordained a deacon under his protest. And slowly companions came to Francis, people who wanted to follow his life of sleeping in the open, begging for garbage to eat, and loving God. With companions, Francis knew he now had to have some kind of direction to this life, so he opened the Bible in three places. He read the command to the rich man to sell all his goods and give to the poor, the order to the apostles to take nothing on their journey, and the demand to take up the cross daily. Here is our rule, Francis said, as simple and as seemingly impossible as that. He was going to do what no one thought possible anymore, live by the gospel. And Francis took these commands so literally that he made one brother run after the thief who stole his hood and offer him his robe. Francis never wanted to begin a religious order. This former knight thought that sounded too military. And he thought of what he was doing as expressing God's brotherhood. His companions came from all walks of life, from fields and towns, nobility and common people, universities, the church, and the merchant class. Francis practiced true equality by showing honor, respect, and love to every person, whether they were beggar or pope. Francis' brotherhood included all of God's creation, much has been written about Francis' love of nature, but his relationship was deeper than that. We call someone a lover of nature if they spend their free time in the woods or admire its beauty. But Francis really felt that nature, all God's creation, were part of his brotherhood. The sparrow was as much his brother as the Pope. In one famous story, Francis preached to hundreds of birds about being thankful to God for their wonderful clothes, for their independence, and for God's care. And the story tells us the birds stood still as he walked among them, only flying off when he said they could leave. Another famous story involves a wolf that had been eating human beings, and Francis intervened when the town wanted to kill the wolf and talked to the wolf into never killing again. And the wolf became a pet to the townspeople who made sure that he always had plenty to eat. In our reading from Genesis, God creates animals to be companions for humanity. In Revelation, the vision of heaven has every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing praises to God. And in our gospel text, Jesus is preaching about how much God loves us. God's love for us is so deep, so wide, so full, that we have nothing to worry about. And Jesus uses the example of how God cares for the birds, God cares for the flowers, and God loves us even more than he loves them. So God will care for us, too. St. Francis believed, and scripture supports, that all of creation is caught up in the redemption of Jesus Christ. It isn't just about us as individuals, or even just about humanity, but all of creation gathers to praise God at the end of time. And until that day, we have been entrusted by God to care for creation, for the animals who accompany us in this life, and for the world around us. So let us follow in the footsteps of St. Francis, and let us devote our lives to God, sharing the gospel and caring for creation. Amen.
patient Lord of life. Guide our choices so that we might safeguard habitats, ensuring by your grace that the mysteries and beauties of nature unfold for future generations. Creator of the universe, empower us to care for creation. Saving Lord of Lords, your word foretells a day when the wolf will lie down with the lamb. Renew our vision for the peaceable kingdom. Creator of the universe, empower us to care for creation. O oh God, you are infinite, unbounded love, and will not allow the love which exists between your creatures to perish. We pray for those animals who have died, Comfort all those who mourn, especially those who have lost a beloved pet. Creator of the universe, empower us to care for creation. Hear our prayers, gracious God, for the sake of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Go as instruments of God's peace. Where there is hatred, sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, peace. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the eternal Spirit of God. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.